In this video, we're going to show you how to do an annuity or credit card example on the TI Inspire using recursive formulas in the graphing function. So the first example we want to look at is uh, annuity. And this isn't uh, always an annuity, but uh, it's kind of the concept that we just put regular payments in or we get regular payments out for an annuity. But we uh, want to look at this. Tim wants to save for his new baby's college. He puts $80 into an account monthly that earns 5% APR annual percentage rate that is compounded monthly. Will he have enough for college on his child's 18th birthday? So looking at this, we want to write this in a recursive form because we're putting in repetitive deposits of $80. What we want to do is figure out what happens with that $80. I have another video that's called Annuity Three Ways. That's also done with the TI-8384. Uh, but we have to update this with the Inspire. So what we want to do is we want to say that anything that I have now was based on my previous and whatever investment I have is going to be paying me 5% yearly interest but per month and so I got to divide it by 12 and then I'm going to add in $80 every month. So there's the 5% there. I got to write it as a decimal and then plus 80. The other thing I need to know is that uh, how many times am I going to do this? So I'm going to go 18 times 12, which I believe is 216. If I did that right. Now this doesn't work in the calculator, so what we have to use is the uh, other notation. So how we would write this mathematically is something like this. Now is equal to the previous, and then 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, and then plus 80. And then looking at this one, in the calculator, we have U notation. So usually they have U of 1 or 2 or 3. And then I'd have to do U of 1, N minus 1. They can't do subscripts in the calculator, so they're going to write it like this. And then you can just put the same exact thing after that. So this would be for the calculator. And then we also have to make sure that we go out to 216 payments. So let's try that one now. All right, it is 216, good. Okay, so what I want to do is add another page, and I want to add a graphing page. And when I add this graphing page, what I want to do is a different graph entry. So I go to Menu, and I do this graph entry, number 3. And then the one that I want is this number 6, which is a sequence. And I want this sequence here. I have U2 because I have a previous one. So I want to put this equation in that we just had. So under the new graph entry under sequence, we have this right here that we put in there. And then the initial term is 80 because at time 1, I'm going to put in the $80. So that's what I want to look at. I also have to change this number to 216. We may have talked about changing this one to 0, but it just works out better if we just leave it at 1 right now and work with this. And we hit Enter. There's nothing that shows up. We have to find this graph. So if I add in $80 every month, i got to probably change my window. So my window settings, first of all, my X's, my X's are going to go to 216. So let's make it 220. And then if I'm doing $80 times 216, ooh, that isn't going to be very much money, is it? So I'm going to go to about 25000 and see how that works. Ooh, I went above 25000 Ooh, I might be able to save one year of college by doing that. Yeah, I guess I'm Tim. Okay, so <clears throat> what we do then is I can change this window a little bit if I want, and it looks like I'm going up about 30000 How can I see this exact? And actually, they show me the equation here, or more accurate. What I can do is I can go Menu, and then do put in the table. And I'm going to do a split-screen table, and here's what I got. So what I want to do is I want to go down to 216 and see what my value is at 216. Oh, this is taking some time. La dee 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 dee. I'll show you a shortcut in a minute. I went past it. So what happens at 216 is I end up with this number right here. However, this number is not accurate and this number is not accurate. What happens is that, yes, I've made my 216 payments. That's what I wanted to do. But this will still have one more month to earn interest. I don't want to put in my 216th payment and then uh, just take it out straight away. I want it to earn one more month of interest. 
or if I look at this number, this has earned that interest on the 216th payment, but I actually put in one extra payment that I didn't want. So either I got to subtract 80 from this one or apply the interest rate to this one. And you can get these values more accurate if you click on them and look down below here. I'm just going to use the dollar amounts for this. You should maybe use a few decimal places. So the real amount that we're going to end up with, and I had both of these in the columns that I was looking at, what I have to do with this 216 is I have to multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. Because I made my last payment, it has to carry that last full month for me to earn some more interest and then I can take it out. Or I can take this 217, which means I made one too many payments, and then I can subtract whatever amount that I was putting in all the time. These two numbers should be equal. They might be off a little bit based on uh, decimal places, or hopefully I didn't copy those incorrectly. But those should be exactly the same. That value would be the value of your annuity after that time. So you can go ahead and calculate that using the recursive methods. All right, on the credit card, I don't want to be as accurate. Well, I, I should be as accurate, but um, we're not going to be as accurate. We want to get an idea of this. And so we're just going to read off what the calculator does. A lot of little nuances with the credit card. You don't pay interest the first month, da, 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 da. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go with this and get an idea when we're going to pay this one off. So if you notice, I want my man cave. So I go out and put $3,000 on my credit card for a TV fridge and a lazy boy. Sweet. And I decide to pay the minimum. I've never done this. Don't do that. But I've decided to just pay the minimum per month on a card that charges 20% interest. Yes, that's what a lot of credit cards do. So if I want to write this, what's going to happen is that anything I have now is equal to my previous amount and now the bank is going to charge me interest they're going to charge me 20 percent monthly well it's 20 percent I said that wrong 20 percent annual interest and they're going to do it broken up into 12 pieces because they're going to charge me every month and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay off 75 so since I owe 3,000 I want to pay off 75, 75 as much as I can, so that's why we subtract with that one. So now it's going to be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1. 1 plus, and I'll just pause this and write it out. So this would be in the math notation that we use, and then this would be in the recursive formula into the calculator that we're using. And then the first term is 3,000. So let's punch that in and see what happens. So if I get a, I'll try a new page here. I want to do graphs again. And so with the graphs, this function is not what I want. So I want to go menu and I want to go graph entry. And I want to do sequence again. And so here's another sequence. And this one, uh, hopefully I don't go over 99. I don't know if that matters or not. Let's look. So I'm going to enter in the equation. Pause and I'll come. So how long will this take to pay off? What are you guessing? Try to guess something. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is now set my window. I know that i got to go up to 3,000, and hopefully the balance doesn't go up. It should go down. So when I do my window settings, uh, this would be just a little bit over 3,000. How about that? And then my time period, oh, I like to do five years just to see what five years will bring. And five years is 60 payments. And let's see if we get it paid off in 60 payments. There it is. Oh, no, it's not paid off. So somewhere here, about 70 payments or so. So it's not even paid off in five years. I got a brand new baby. I got a man cave. And I got payments until over six years for my man cave. Not a good idea. Not a good idea at all, people. Once again, we can go to the table. And uh, sorry, I didn't want the control there. I just wanted the menu. And put in the table. And so if I look at the balance, when will this be zero? I passed it there. So it is right around 60, 70, so 67. So somewhere between the 67th and 68th payment, this is going to be gone. 
So over five years. And I want you to write down these values so I know what you're plugging in and so you can tell me what, what these values are. Uh, one other thing I didn't show you is that also on the calculator, I can, uh, if I add another page, sorry, if I add another page and I just do it on a calculator, I can figure out U3, and it should darken because I have something in there, I can do of 67 and see if I'm paid off yet after 67 months. Nope, I still carry a balance. So U3 of 68, do I still carry a balance? No. So I've paid it off now. So you can look at that and that's another way to plug it in rather than bouncing up and down. Okay, so I hope this helped you with the calculator and doing that recursive method for annuity and such. And good luck in your future credit card endeavors. Thank you.